What's up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, as you can see from the title, Kevin Lavroni cannot overtrain. Now, you're probably like, Jerry, what the fuck does Kevin Lavroni overtraining have to do with anything that's going on right now? Okay, just bear with me. So I put up a video, or maybe I didn't put up a video, but I, I have filmed it, so whether or not you've seen it yet, because I don't put these up in order, they just kind of go up when I decide to put them up, about overtraining and um, instinctive training and diet, etc., etc. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out. It explains a lot of shit in there. But being able to work with people that um, are very, very hands-on, smart, and knew about things a lot more than I did, like Kevin Lavroni. Um, Brad Hollibaugh was actually, Al Thurston was the first one I worked with. Eddie DePina also. Um, these were guys that were older, been around a long time. They had a certain way of doing things. And then Brad Hollibaugh in 2006, I worked with him for the, uh, the Body Rock and brought the best package I ever had at that point. And then I didn't work with anybody for a while. And then it was 2000 and 2012. I started working with Phil Hernan for that show. Actually, no, with Kevin. I worked, started working with Lavroni in 2009, in 10. And it was 2007. 2000, shit, it was 2009, 2010, 2011. So he was pretty much guiding me. We worked very closely together in 2009, but guiding me for those other years. And in 2012, I hired Phil Hernan and worked with him. And working with different people in their different training styles and you know, absorbing this information, you know, I learned that, you know, Phil Hernan could train to a certain point, like he was just a, a fucking hardcore animal trainer that went by feel. And Kevin Lavroni was a fucking incredibly strong guy who went by feel. Like each one of these guys went by feel. So I kind of step back and I'm like, okay, well, why are their training styles so different if they're going by feel? And what I learned was um, Phil Hernan actually would overtrain a little bit easier, or actually a lot easier than Kevin Lavroni would. So he kept his um, workouts to short periods, like 35 to 45 minutes, and he would go all out to failure, and um, that would be it. He'd be out of the gym. It was like, you know, compound movements, and then out of the gym, and he gave everything to those. Now, Lavroni, completely fucking different animal. The guy, and in, in both admittedly used steroids throughout the year when they were pros, both were fucking monsters. You know, as far as size-wise, I think Phil was in the 260s. Kevin got up to two, over the 270s. So both of them about the same size. And the one thing that I noticed was Kevin could train more sets per body part longer than Phil could and still recover. And what really made me stop and think, and it was a story that, um, you know, Kevin and I, we were sitting there talking, and we were doing this lunge sequence, which I actually think is up on the channel, the Kevin Lavroni M3 lunge sequence, or whatever the fuck it's called. But Kevin showed me this lunge thing that he did for the Night of Champions one year that he actually won. And um, was it night? anyways, it doesn't matter. He, he won the show that he was doing this for. And he, um, he showed me the thing. I did it about three or four times, and I was fucking gassed. It was, it was hard to do. It looks so simple, but it's hard. And um, I asked Kevin, I said, wow, what's the most you ever got, got to? And he said, 60. I said, 16? Because 16 was so fucking far-fetched. He goes, no, 60, 60. And I was like, how the fuck is that even possible? Like, I, I don't think I could even make 16 no matter what drugs I was on, no matter what the fuck I was doing. If I slept in between fucking rounds, if I don't think I'd be able to do it. And I realized his body recovers a lot faster between sets than the average person. I would train with him. I would see it. And he would be doing it and still talking to me. And this is when he wasn't even training at all. Like he hadn't been training for like 12 or 13 years and he was doing the lunge sequence, talking to me, explaining shit while he was doing it, while I was gassed while I was doing it. I'm like, holy fuck. Now, that's just one example of what Kevin can do in that high volume. And he said that after 60 sets, he said he couldn't walk. So they carried him to his car and they put him in the backseat of his car and he took a nap in his car and his legs cramped up in the car and shit and he got up and he was all fucked up. And that was just one of his leg workouts that he did. Now, Phil would never do something like that. His stuff was hardcore, in and out of the gym, you know, four sets of squats to failure, and then, you know, four sets of uh, maybe um, stiff legged deadlifts, calves, and then he'd be out. But he also trained with back with that too. He'd do like chin ups. Like it was just a different style of training. He recovered differently. And then I was talking to Kevin one time about a leg workout that we did. And he said, he goes, I remember one time he goes, I did legs. And it was like a 35 set workout. It was like uh, barbell squats, hack squats, leg presses, leg extension leg curls, stiff leggings, lunges. It was tons of fucking volume and like high compound movements with heavy weights, right? And he said he went home and he was fucking fried. It was like 10 o'clock at night. He goes, he laid in bed. His legs were fucking aching. And he said, what if I didn't do enough to stimulate growth? What if I left something on the table? What if I just didn't do enough? 
fuck, you know, I got the Olympia coming up. I want to be the best. I need to outwork the other guys. He's telling himself this before he goes to bed. Sets the alarm, gets up at 5 in the morning, right? Doesn't eat. Goes back to the gym and does the same fucking workout again. And I asked him, was it the same poundage? He goes, I don't really remember. But he goes, I tried to get as close to the same poundages again as I did the day before. So in 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, 7. So in 7 hours, he did the whole 35-set leg workout again, fasted, just because he thought maybe he didn't do enough. And this was like a regular occurrence. As a matter of fact, um, I started actually doing that with some of my clients and stuff, which, you know, if I saw them fucking dragging, I'd be like, look, you're going to have to come back here tomorrow and we're going to fucking do it again. You know, and some of them fucking never came back to do it. <laughs> they were like fucking, some of them fucking took the challenge and did it. And I called them the deja vu workouts. They're actually on my uh, my bio three website. Deja vu workouts because you're doing the same fucking workout the next day. You know, or, you know, sometimes with the clients, it wasn't necessarily the next day. It was like, you know, if they train Monday, it'd be Wednesday. We do the same workout because they didn't, they didn't have it. They didn't push. So, you know, that's when I really started to look back and go, you know, Kevin can't overtrain no matter what the fuck he does. He doesn't overtrain. You've seen him doing poundages, presses behind the neck with 450 pounds, incline bench presses with 500 pounds. And this is consistently all the time while he's training. And 99% of this has to do with his genetics. He just does not overtrain. I talked to Cutler about it, um, you know, in depth before. And I said, do you think you actually recover faster than the average person? And he said, yes, I think my body recovers faster. He was able to do two a day workouts with high volume in the morning and night, two cardio sessions a day. And, you know, of course he was eating a lot of carbohydrates still, but he would rotate his carbs in the zigzag way. And he would still be doing 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes of cardio in the night. And he would still fucking recover and not lose strength now i don't know if you've ever tried that but i tried cutler's routine back in the day when he was still he was in california but when i was in living in massachusetts i couldn't do it like there's no fucking way it didn't matter how much drugs i took didn't matter what i ate i couldn't do it my body's not like that and you know i learned that phil's way was better for me um you know the very low sets and i learned that most people out there that are not genetic freaks will recover better with the low sets high intensity style of training rather than doing the high volume shit and frying the central nervous system so guys, you know, be aware. You may see guys doing fucking tons of shit like this, doing this, doing that, whatever. That works for them. That does not mean it's going to work for you. And what works for you is not going to work for them, more than likely. So be aware. You got to try different things, experiment, see what works for you, and um, just be smart about it. Don't do something just because someone else does it or told you to do it. If it's not working for you, change it. Buy also training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.bustering.com is a blog. It's a do what works for you bicep and wear out.